Welcome back, my dear students. This is Mavo Sodonaki, Senior Lecturer of Master College, Department of Biology. Today, I will discuss two creative questions in uh, your uh, from your textbook. You can see here a uh, step is given, and I will discuss another creative question after just after this uh, question. First of all, the question may arise: Why you will discuss this? Create a question today. Actually, you have, uh, you will, uh, you are going to appear your SSC exam after two or three months, or maybe after a few days. Okay. So before this, I think it, uh, you, you should take some preparation, and how you will uh, write down the answer, or how will be the length, uh, what will be the length of the answer. Okay. How long uh, you should uh, write the answer, or the limitation of the different questions uh, that, uh, to what extent you have to write the answers okay now first of all there are four types of question you know in a creative question first of all uh, what is the interface in uh, question number a you will get the knowledge based question and in b you will get the comprehensive question and in c you will get a applied based question and in d you will get a higher efficiency question. In this question stream, you can see that the stream is given with a flowchart or a chart. The, in this stream, it is given the living word, then monera and pneumonia. You can understand is, uh, easily that this is from chapter 1. Okay. In chapter 1, we have found that the total living world is divided into two super kingdom. One is Prokaryota and another one is super kingdom eukaryota. And under these two super kingdom, there are five kingdoms: kingdom monera, then protista, then fungi, fungi, and uh, plantae, and finally the animalia. <clears throat> so, in this above in this stem, here B indicates protista, C indicates fungi, and D indicates kingdom plantae. And finally these two are given monera and animalia hence it is given you know according to the development of the organ uh, different organs or different parts of the uh, plants or animals body so the sequence is like this first of all the first query question is or the first cq is in the first cq the first knowledge this question what is interface the resting period in between uh, two consecutive cell division actually is known as interface before uh, starting a cell division, a cell has to take some preparation. And this stage is known as interface. Now the second question, why meiosis is called reduction of cell division? These two questions, actually A and B is from chapter 3, that is cell division chapter. So why might meiosis is called reduction of cell division? In case of answering this question, you have to first write down the definition. What is meiosis? Then you will explain why it is known as a reduction of cell division. So the answer will be in two parallel. First parallel is the process of cell division in which the nucleus of a cell divides twice, but the chromosome divides only once, and the and produce two four daughter cell is known as meiosis cell division. So again, I'm repeating the definition, the process of cell division in which the nucleus of a mother cell divides twice, but the chromosome divides only once and produce four daughter cells in which the number of chromosomes in the daughter cell remain or become half than that of the mother cell is known as meiosis cell division. Then in the second part, you will write, hence in meiosis cell division, the number of chromosomes become half in the daughter cell than that of the mother cell. That is why it is known as reductional cell division. So students, I think it is clear to all of you how you will write down the answer of a comprehensive question. You have to answer in two pairs. In first pair, you will define the definition. Then you will, uh, in the second pair, you will write the causes, why it is known as so. Okay. Then number C. Explain the naming process of the organisms which belong to D as mentioned in the stem. You can see 
which belong to D. What is indicated by D? D indicates kingdom plenty. Okay. So, in case of kingdom plenty, you will here, you will give all the examples relating to the answer in, in the examples of pants. Hence, all the organisms belongs to they belong to the earth plants it is it is regarding to kingdom plenty now the naming process of the organism should belong to d as mentioned in the stem at first you you, you can understand easily that this it is from chapter one as the stem is from chapter one now you will first write the uh, in uh, the answer in this way the naming process of the uh, first of all you will uh, write down that the uh, in the above stem d indicates kingdom plenty the organisms of kingdom plenty is given name by icbn that is international code of botanical nomenclature okay the rules of naming uh, process of the organism or the plenty or the organisms of uh, kingdom plenty as given below then you will write down the rules one by one according to your book how first of all just you will write down the two write down the two lines that i have stated uh, right now then you will write first of all in, in uh, um, roman number number one the uh, the language of this uh, the uh, language of the uh, scientific naming should be latin then all the names should be latin word okay uh, uh, then the second one there will be two part in this name the first name is genus and the second part is species for example the scientific name of pandy is oryza sativa okay you can see this is the example of a plant so uh, or you can I also give the examples of mango plant, magnifer indica. Okay, so or as a sativa, the name should have two parts. One is genus part, another one is species part. When you uh, write uh, the name, uh, when the name is uh, when it's printed, then it should be in italic form. Okay, then uh, hence the name has two parts. The first part is known as, as you know, the genus, and the second part is known as species. The genus name is always start with a capital letter. Here, O is started, or is started with capital letter, and the rest of the parts is uh, letters we are a smaller type. And the second, the second part, uh, that means in genus part, is species part, all the letters will be in a small letter. Okay, then so. Uh, the uh, name should have two parts and uh, a, when it is printed it should be in italic form but when the name is written in hand or is handwritten then uh, the name sh uh, uh, that, that should be other uh, two names or the two parts should be underlined separately as I have underlined this okay this is another rules of naming this or organism another rule is every organism should have an unique legitimate name a name should shouldn't be used for two organisms distinct organism okay then the next point is uh, the, if the name is uh, given by several scientists in that case the earliest name that is given by the first scientist or the earliest name that is given by an, uh, a scientist uh, will be uh, get, uh, will, will get, uh, get the acceptance according to the rules of priority then another uh, last uh, rules uh, rule is the uh, the uh, in some cases the name of the the name of the scientist can be cited at the end of the scientific name such as oris river if uh, the uh, name of the scientist can be given at the end of this scientific name along with the uh, year of naming so these all are then uh, thus you will uh, write down the rules of uh, binomial nomenclature and all these are the rules of binomial nomenclature which are given by ICBN. So at the end of this uh, uh, answer you can write uh, thus we can give the name uh, to the organisms of kingdom plenty. 
Now, question number D. Why the organisms of B is more developed than the organisms of C? In, the, in case of answering this question, you will first write down what is indicated by B and what is indicated by C. So from the question, you can see that after Monera, the kingdom that is present is known as Kingdom Protista and then the kingdom uh, C indicated, uh, indicates Kingdom Fagi. Okay. So first of all, you will write in the above stem, B indicates Kingdom uh, Protista and uh, C indicates Kingdom Fungi or Fungi. Then you will write the organism uh, the fire the organisms of fun, fungi are more developed than the organisms of uh, kingdom uh, uh, provista for having the following characteristics or the, for uh, the following reasons then first of all you will write down the characteristics of kingdom provista then you will uh, take characteristics of you will write the answer then the characteristics of kingdom provista then you will write the characteristics one by one okay first of all you will uh, write on the, the uh, organisms of provista are unicellular uh, or maxillar or filamentous then they are their nucleus is well organized the, in the chromatin material dna rna and protein are present then their chief mode of nutrition is uh, ingestion then uh, photosynthesis or absorption then they reproduce by uh, my, they reproduce by mitosis or uh, by the uh, process of uh, sexual reproduction by conjugation process. Okay. Then you can give the examples amoeba, then uh, paramecium, all the examples that is diatom. All these are the uh, examples of kingdom protista. You will write down the characteristics. Then you will uh, again write down the characteristics of kingdom fungi. Then you will write down the characteristics one by one. The, the, or they, they are saprophytic, parasitic, then uh, their cell wall is made up of chitin, their mode, uh, chief mode of nutrition is absorption, they can reproduce by a spore or by mitosis cell division. So then, uh, then you will give the examples that is yeast, uh, penicillium, etc. Then at the end of this answer, you will write for having the above characteristics or more developed uh, tissue system or the developed org uh, organisms or the developed structure uh, of in case of the organism of kingdom fungi is more developed than that of the organisms of kingdom protista thus you will write down the answer of these credit questions and uh, my dear students you can already understand uh, it that the uh, at, in case of c and d you have to at first clarify what is indicated in the above step then you will first explain what is indicated uh, by b c and d or other uh, clues that are given in the stem then you will write down the answer okay thus you will uh, can uh, you, you can answer the credit question now credit question number two you can see the stem in this stem grass then grasshopper, frog, and snake. You can see this is from chapter 13. Okay, so what is the what does this step indicate? It indicates it is the predator food chain. In this stem, the grasshopper, which is dependent on grass, grass are the producer, and grasshopper are the primary consumer. Then the frog, frog. Uh, the secondary consumer or consumer of second level which are dependent on grasshopper and in case of in next step next step the snake step is the top consumer or tertiary consumer which are dependent on frog for their foods now in this uh, stem or cq question you can also see that there are four segments one is knowledge based then comprehensive applied based and higher efficiency first question is what is keratokinesis the process of division of nucleus is known as karyokinesis. It is also from chapter 3. Again, why mitosis is called equational solution? In this case, you will also write down the definition first. Then you will clarify or you will make it clear. Then why mitosis is known as equational solution? First of all, what is the definition? 
the process of cell division in which the nucleus and the chromosome of a mother cell divides only once and produces two daughter cells in which the number of chromosome and other characteristics remain same in the daughter cell as like as the mother cell is known as mitosis so in the second paragraph you will write hence in this cell division the number of chromosome in the daughter cell remain same as like as the mother cell that is why mitosis is known as equational cell division so my dear students this will be the answer of comprehensive portion next number c what is indicated by the above step explain in this case you will first of all you will say that or you will write the answer in this way then the above stem or the above stem indicates uh, the predator food chain then you will explain the predator food chain and you will uh, explain also uh, that uh, a grass in the above stem the grass a grass is the predator uh, which will uh, or which uh, can produce the food by the process of photosynthesis they are autotrophs then uh, next you will write in second point uh, the in the in this, uh, food chain the grasshopper are dependent on grass for their food and they consume uh, grass and by the uh, by this process they will get the energy then in the next point you will write the grasshopper is also eaten by the is then eaten by the frog uh, which are secondary level of uh, uh, secondary consumer or consumer of second level uh, they are uh, they uh, the grasshopper was herbivores because they are dependent on plants for the food but in case of frog they are carnivores okay they are dependent on grasshopper or primary level of consumer or flavor consumers of first level then you will uh, say in the next point you will write then the frog is uh, then eaten by the uh, snakes or the snake are dependent on frogs for their food and uh, they are uh, depend hence they are dependent on uh, secondary level of consumer or secondary consumer of second level they are known as tertiary consumer or uh, top consumers thus you will write down the answer of question number c okay in the next question question number d what will happen if the number of grasshoppers increases rapidly in the above process analyze so my dear students you can see the stem is given of an predator food chain which is found in an ecosystem so you will write if the number of grasshopper uh, grasshopper will increase rapidly the number of grass will be decrease because the num as the number of will be increased uh, uh, as the number of the grasshopper will increase they will depend more on grass and they will eat more grasses and uh, then the number of grass will be less but hence the number of grasshopper is increased that is why the frogs which are dependent on grasshopper for their food they will consume or they will get more food and the number of frog will also increase and after that hence the number of frog will be increased in the, the snakes which are dependent on frog for their food the number will also be increased then what will be the result the result will be hence the number of grass is reducing so the uh, but the number of grasshopper is increased but that is why the a large the grasshoppers which became large in uh, uh, larger in volume in number so they will reduce due to the scarcity of food hence the number of grass is uh, becoming less so the grasshopper will die in this care for the scarcity or the, for the lacking of food and when the grasshopper will die the frogs which are dependent on the grasshopper they will also die the, the number of frog will also be reduced then the, as a result the snakes the number of snakes will also be reduced ultimately what will be the effect the effect will be the total food chain will be disturbed or destroyed due to the re reduction of food or the producer ultimately the uh, the food chain that is remaining or present in any ecosystem that will be interrupted okay so you can write the answer in this way thus you will uh, answer this creative question number 
So the stress, how you will answer, I think you can uh, understand it very easily. Uh, how you will answer question number D, question number C, B and A. In case of knowledge this question, it will be the direct answer. It will you will write down on directly the definition. In case of B, you will first state the uh, definition, then you will uh, write down the uh, reason. In case of C, at first you will uh, make it clear what is indicated by the stem. Then you will write the or explain what is uh, wanted or what is asked for uh, writing. And then you will, uh, in case of D, you will also state first the stem or you will clear, make it clear that uh, what is uh, asked for writing then you will explain the next portion that is, uh, the, the, that is asked for the writing uh, the next part of the question so my dear students i i think this will be helpful these two will be helpful or my today's class will be helpful for you to how you will answer the <coughs> creative questions in your exam answer script in my next class i will be back with new Creative questions and we will from different chapters. Till then, take care.